Hi guys. So, a lot of you in the Facebook group wanted me to do a story about Jenny Lofton because of Lauren Thompson's case from Carthage in Panola County, Texas. And Jenny Lofton has been missing since 1994 from Carthage. She moved there with her family when she was about 12 and was dating a guy named Charles Chip Lofton and they were dating very young, 15 and 16 I believe and they got married really young when they were 16. They went on to have two boys and eventually the marriage kind of disintegrated. It got to a point where Jenny left because of abuse from her husband. Some people described Chip as being abusive and controlling towards Jenny. She wasn't allowed to leave the house. Um, he controlled what she wore and where she went and threatened her. Uh, there was like constant arguments and he even would go so far as to check the mileage on her car. Um, a few weeks after her divorce was finalised, she dated a friend of the family. Um, and it was just like a, a first date and that night his house caught fire. Um, no one ever uh, determined if it was arson or an accident, but it just was funny timing um, relating to this uh, this date with the other man. A few months after Jeannie went missing, um, Chip had shot himself in the arm and said it was a drive-by shooting. Um, so that was these false reports and he served one year for perjury. On the day that he was due to take a lie detector test in relation to Jeannie's disappearance uh, was the day that he shot himself in the arm, obviously to be able to uh, buy himself some more time. That information about the drive-by shooting and the polygraph were mentioned in this news paper article that came out about a year after Jenny went missing. It also goes on to talk about other pieces of the case which to this day hasn't been solved. Um, so making this video is, is quite difficult in that um, in 2003 Chip committed suicide and he was always um, thought of as the person who did something to her. This is the actual article that reports on Chip's incarceration and also being ordered to pay a thousand dollars in fines. The original newspaper article mentions that they were had both been arrested however I have since found out that the record uh, of Jeannie's was because she had stopped by to pick up some personal items for herself and their two boys and again he was aggravated and abusing um, but she copped a uh, charge for that one. After Jenny's disappearance at some time prior to his suicide in 2003, Chip moved to Nacogdoches and started up a new relationship with a woman named Katie White. She had three daughters, April, Autumn and Savannah. 
So there were a couple of harassment charges and things like that and also aggravated sexual assault charges against him for one or more of the daughters of his current girlfriend. Once again, like the uh, being shot in the arm uh, on the same day as the polygraph, uh, Chip committed suicide on the 13th of August 2003. That day he was supposed to have taken a polygraph test in regards to this aggravated sexual assault. And what actually really annoys me about this is if you go to findagrave.com and look at his memorial there and a picture of the grave site, there's more information in this memorial than there is in total out there anymore of Jeannie's disappearance. There's barely anything. The Charlie Project is very bare and um, doesn't tell you a lot. I mean, I'll tell you what about what happened that day, but yeah, I just didn't appreciate the length that it all went to for this man and his memorial. So on the 1st of April 1994, uh, Jeannie and one of her sisters had taken one of the boys, little boys, to the doctor and met up with Chip to give the boys to him for the weekend. On Saturday the 2nd of April 94, he called Jeannie wanting to meet up with her and she refused. Um, their mum got off work about 3.30 that Saturday um, so she had been out and dropped them all back home and then was supposed to just go and get a prescription for the little boy so uh, basically the the pin here is not the exact um, location of Jeannie's home but it's it's close I mean this was just this trip was like a 10 minute drive just down the road on US 79. There was no deviation or anything required to where the chemist was, the pharmacy. So sometime after that, the prescription had been filled as it was in the car. The car was found on Sunday the next day and the seats were so far back that she was not the one driving because um, Jenny was only about five foot five, um, so someone much taller had been driving the car and it had been found uh, at a church, Pleasant Ridge Baptist Church, on FM 2517. Uh, so you can see that south of, of Carthage it was, had been found in the church parking lot. So it was her mother's car that she'd been driving that day. It was found at this church's um, parking lot. Jeannie's keys and purse were in the car. Uh, witnesses had said that they had noticed a white Isuzu truck around this area around the time that Jeannie disappeared. Chip had a blue truck but to this day according to early reports newspaper reports um, all white trucks were, were stopped and checked and no one ever became a person of interest or a suspect in relation to her disappearance. It would be reported that Chip would go to bars after Jeannie's disappearance and brag about being the one to make her disappear, uh, but then later on would deny it and it, it just became hearsay. There was also another incident where two young boys uh, had heard their father and friends talking about it and where Jeannie was located. Uh, those kids were take it in for questioning but nothing ever ever came of it. There was a strange comment made too by Chip um, the night of Jeannie's disappearance. He came to the house to pick the kids up at about 
seven, eight o'clock that night on April 2nd, 1994, and said, well, Jeannie's not here, so I'll take the kids. And I think the family thought that quite odd, um, that, you know, how did he know Jeannie wasn't there? So that has, has stayed with them for many, many years. It's really sad that it doesn't seem justice can be served here in Jeannie's case, but I do believe that perhaps there could be some closure to bring her home if those young boys came forward again and told what they overheard. Also, Chip's best friend at the time was Dan Matheson, and they called him Peanut if he was alive still and came forward and perhaps told what he knew, the family might be able to at least bring her home to rest. Uh, and the family does want everyone to know that she was a great mother and that it was never a choice to leave her boys. She loved them very much. So if all we can take from this video is remembering her, then I'm okay with that but it sure would be great to bring her home to rest.